uh, Mahmoud and now uh, with Imam Sun and Mel Dabi Muhammad in Cambodia, and then uh, Rija Prom, Rija Harai, Dayao, and Rija Nagan, amongst other ceremonies in Vietnam. There seem to be some parallel saints and deities between the group, two groups. Uh, these are called the Yang Thak and Yang Krao, so old gods and new gods. Specifically, there seem to be a lot of parallels amongst the Yang Krao, which is important to suggest that the divergence of the two communities. Uh, there's two figures that are, I was able to pick up on, Ho Tan Hawk, which is, translates to the captain of the ship. But uh, it's basically a, it seems to be a specific figure, like uh, would be Lakshmana in Malay. Um, it seems to be a specific figure that uh, was represented in the 17th century. And then there's this figure, who is the Mokstro Palay. And the Mokstro Palay is basically a village grandmother, who is the only matriarch who is considered clean enough to be able to prepare all the offerings of the rites during ceremonies. So when you have those big uh, plates, that you have rice and bananas and everything, she's the woman whose hands are clean enough to be able to touch the rice that goes into everybody's mouth. Um, and there's the most throwable in both body communities in Cambodia and in Vietnam. And this is, seems to be something that is relatively unique to the unique to the Chan communities in those areas, specifically amongst the Bani, but then something that they have in common. So there are certain manuscripts that they would parallel each other, already amongst the Ballet appears in both Vietnam and Cambodia. And then there's a story of Sas Kai and the Salvada manuscript. There are also certain life cycle rituals, uh, Kara, which is a cutting of hair ceremony for young women young girls, 11 to 10, 11, 12. Khotan, which is a, uh, in Vietnam, this is an interesting divergence. In Vietnam, it's a symbolic circumcision. In Cambodia, it's actual circumcision. Uh, but in Vietnam, it's dropped to the point where it's just symbolic. Uh, then there's also rituals called Akapian Tamubani, which are basically when somebody from outside the Bani community marries into it. But these are all rituals that they seem to have. Um, then some closing thoughts just as sort of social consciousness. Uh, one of the things that I ran into while I was in Vietnam was contestation of over ancestral grave sites. Right? Now this happens a lot in Southeast Asia. Um, but one of the practices for the body in Vietnam that sort of separates them from Cambodia, specifically during the month of Ramadan, they have this practice of going to ancestral grave sites first, and then they call the ancestral spirits back to join them. This happens before the month of Ramadan. They call the ancestral spirits back to join them. Then they bring the ancestral spirits back to the house, give offerings to them, and then the run of Ramadan starts. So this is something that is seen as the ancestral spirits actually participate in Ramadan. Um, now these sites are, because the grave sites are only maintained when there's a funeral or during Ramadan, right? So before and after Ramadan. So at most uh, three times a year or, or four times a year, uh, because during a funeral, a family will only open once one portion. So really only maintained once or twice a year. Consequentially, they're built on top of, or have been built on top of. This was a house that was built on top. One in the 1980s. This is Mi Tung. Uh, the last time I was here, there was a cement. This is Sun, who was my research assistant, and also a good friend of mine. Um, but he is standing where there's now a bulldozer that's going to build a road or an extension of the house that's right there. Um, and then this one is on, this is an ancestral grand site, but it's on farmland. Um, so these are all sites that are at the provincial level. There's been some discourse over what to do about this, because specifically the Vietnamese families who live there have 
no way to move off of the land because they're basically poor farmers. And the child community has no way to protect those sites because the local government has recognized them. That's an issue that I think more people, these kinds of issues are issues that I think more people should be paying attention to. So, that is the end of my research project. <laughs>
in terms of that being a child site, and you know, that's one of those things like uh, Nui Sam, it's called Nui Sam, or uh, uh, Phnom Nam, or Phnom Sam, outside of Chao which is, this is now a Vietnamese site, uh, but it's classically associated with food and that as well. Um, so there are all these air, there are all these sites here in this region that are associated with food. Um, so both. Yeah. <laughs> Do the Japanese and Thailand also face the same difficulties with the Vietnamese government like that kind of Ah. At what time? Well, Thank you, William. Thank you. Thank you.